How many of you think these are pretty crazy times? So many things are transpiring uh, in the world around us. Now, those things really don't have to have much effect on us as adults, uh, those that uh, have an understanding of their uh, authority in Christ Jesus. We have, we've been given power over all the power of the enemy. But, you know, isn't it just like the world to attack the babies and the children? And really, that's what we see that really triggered me uh, talking about what I'm going to talk about tonight. Uh, but I believe it's important. I believe it's important that uh, we understand. You need to be challenged uh, uh, in order to uh, locate yourself. You know, sometimes we have to locate ourselves. You know, where am I uh, as it pertains to this or this or this? And obviously, our nation over the last uh, 60 or 70 years has, uh, has been subtly altering what people are exposed to. And, uh, and that's not a good thing. And the worst thing that can happen when a when a person or a family or an individual is exposed to things and they become desensitized. You understand what I'm saying? And then maybe something shows up around you in your family or your extended family. Now all of a sudden, you got some stuff to deal with now or to shut up about. It just depends. But, you know, God has very uh, pointed views about what's right and what's wrong. Now, the beautiful part about the things of God and the plan of God is he's got a way for us to be fixed. He's got a way for us to be fixed. So, you know, none of you are sitting here right now have anything fatal in front of you that you can't deal with. You know what I mean? So it's important that you understand that because it might not be for you. It might be for somebody uh, in your family. It might be for somebody that's uh, uh, under your influence that you have an opportunity to talk to about things. And uh, unfortunately, they're not as touchy a subject <laughs> as they used to be. You know what I'm saying? People just blow it off like it ain't no big deal. And uh, even much of the church world has blown off things and will not or refuses to deal with them. Huh? Yeah. But they have to be dealt with. Right. Yeah. I believe the only fair way to present the word is to present all the words you know. Yeah. That's true. And uh, I think we see a great example of that uh, uh, when we look at the ministry of Paul. I mean, he had, uh, he had a lot going for him. He was an intelligent man. But uh, when he had his, uh, when he had his uh, collision with the Lord Jesus, his life changed drastically. He never walked with him personally, but he sure heard from him personally. And that uh, confrontation he had with the master... changed his life and gave us an opportunity to change our lives. Because one thing for sure, he never avoided talking about what needed to be talked about. And the truth is, because there's nothing new under the sun, these same things still need to be talked about. And so really, it doesn't make any difference how uncomfortable they make you. They're in the Word of God. And they're in the Word of God and available to us so that we can be the overcomers that God's called us to be. I mean, if you're going to make a decision to serve God, you ought to know what the rules are. Isn't that right? I mean, for you to just think, you know, uh, 
six pack of candles every week? Huh? Few minutes on your knees? Few Hail Mary full of grace? And you're good. No, you need to know. I need to know. I want to know. I want to know what doesn't please God. I don't want to do it as a work. I want to do it in honor of what he's done for me. So I'm not going to avoid the things that I know in today's world. Most people are trapped in. You know, there's small things that people are trapped in. But you know, just a good hard t- trap on one big toe would make you plenty uncomfortable. Yeah. Let alone if it was around your neck. So we're going to start in Romans chapter 1. We're going to have a baptism. Are the bab- those are going to be baptized, are they in here tonight? They hiding out right there. Good. Praise God. It's one. So it's a good thing to be water baptized. It's just uh, it's another it's just another step giving you greater confidence in you having been baptized in him and resurrected with him. And everything you do in honor of God, it seems to strengthen you. It seems to make the next step easier. You understand what I'm saying? And you get on a roll, and then uh, pretty soon you find yourself way down the road. Glory to God. Romans chapter 1, verse 13. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was led hitherto, or not, uh, not able to, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Powerful, powerful verse. Powerful verse. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The word of God is good news. Now it does reveal bad behavior and bad habits, but it is good news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please don't get all down in the mouth if we move past some of your stuff. Because God's got a way of escape. It's called the blood of the Lamb. And obviously every time we escape anything that's hindering us moving forward, then we're going to be blessed. You're blessed. That's just the way God operates. God's a lover. God's a world fla- world-class forgiver. Yes. And he's got enough strength to keep you and I on the up and up until we go up and up. So he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes it. Hallelujah. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. He said, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And you know, as you move forward, it's easier to move forward. Verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God 
is manifest in them. In other words, nothing's hidden. For God has showed it unto them. You know, I don't have to look for an example. I could just use myself. I always knew where I was. I always knew when I was wrong. It's no surprise to people to find out that the things that we knew were wrong have been wrong since the beginning. So we're not the first bunch. We're not getting picked on. This stuff didn't just start being wrong day before yesterday. Huh? It's been wrong ever since the fall. I don't mean the fall of the year. I mean the fall of man. For the invisible things of him from the creation, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Who's without excuse? Everybody's without excuse. Nobody has an excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. I had me some years of that. I had me a lot of years of that. And that's nothing to tag a hallelujah on. But it was the case. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. And just because you have not fashioned anything like that does not mean that you don't have some things. Wherefore, or because of this, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. He gave them up to uncleanness. Well, the truth is, from the fall, from the transgression that Adam and Eve committed from that moment forward, man lost his connection with God and he had no hope of going any direction but south. And so nothing made any difference. Just whatever felt good. Whatever pleased them is what they did. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Again, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use, the the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense 
or that harvest of their error, which was meat or which was suitable for what they had done. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. They're not natural. They're perverted. Being filled with all unrighteousness, Fornication, which if we were to look up the definition, it covers almost everything from soup to nuts. It just does. Any kind of sexual perversion, any kind. Huh? We could call out, and I could have everybody pick one out. We could run through probably 25, 30 different things. Hmm? And because we're all familiar with them, maybe not necessarily having ever indulged in any of them, I won't ask for a show of hands. God really never wants to embarrass anybody. But he enjoys them coming to a place of conviction where they understand that being in his family is not a game. Now, it can be enjoyed a lot because there's freedom in his family. There's no pressure to be something that you can't be or shouldn't be. He just wants you to be the right you. Because when when you're the right you, everything about you will begin to become right. Fornication, adultery, lesbianism, uh, bestiality, uh, masturbation. I want somebody to kind of help me. And say, Give me, Mom, do you have some more? <laughs> Mom, this is really... Fornication uh, in, its, in its purest uh, definition is uh, uh, sexual intercourse uh, outside of marriage. But it also includes lesbianism, homosexuality, bestiality, uh, solo sex, all of those things. Now I can remember, you know, I can I can remember first being uh, being exposed to that those kind of things in in magazines, you know, little stories, short stories, pictures of girls in skimpy outfits, some of them maybe not having their top covered, but that was like the fifties. <laughs> now there was stuff going on long before then, in the speakeasies in the different places in New York, Chicago, you know, the main cities probably right here in Hobbs. Not a main city, but anywhere there are people. Perversion is possible. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness. Now be sure you listen to these other things also. Or highlight this stuff in your Bible. Covetousness. Covetousness is really an inordinate desire for what you don't have. And normally it's an inordinate desire for what somebody else has. But really it's not that you're mad at what they have, it's you're mad at what you don't have. And that's covetousness. God, God can fix that if you'll let him. Maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, 
deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. You make stuff up. You lie on fake book. <laughs> Disobedient to parents. Without understanding. Covenant breakers. Without natural affection. Implacable. Unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do it. Now, that's what they do daily in the world. And they talk about it. They print it. They're proud about it. They rejoice at these people who have made a decision to go in that direction. Well, what are we going to do as a church? What are you going to do maybe that have family members? And obviously, you're not responsible for them acknowledging or changing. But what are you going to do with your relatives or your close friends that continue to pursue that kind of a lifestyle, obviously if they're in the world, you're not personally responsible for what they do. If they're in the church, their behavior needs to be addressed. And it'd probably be better that any of you would address it other than me. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm not embarrassed to address it. But why would somebody that's serious about God need to be addressed by anybody when they know where their knees are and they know that they serve a God who's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness? Now, the sad part about it is now that kids are roped into it. And not just the children that are exposed to the weirdness sexually. But they have parents or family members that are involved in these kind of activities. And that puts pressure on you as parents. You know, that's why it's important if you've got children that you check your whole card on their school. Just on their school. I don't know. Where was that application from or whatever that you told me about today? Broadmoor School. What, they had a, a deal on there where your child was male, female, or transgender. You know, I'd almost rather have my children exposed to the, the things that used to be a big deal, but not a big deal. But now they're exposed to things that can absolutely destroy their life before they even get started. The Bible says that judgment begins in the house yeah. of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Why, is that, why is that the way it's, the way it's supposed to be? Because we're the ones that find out what the truth is. Yeah. And the Bible very clearly says that if we judge ourselves, we won't be judged. And obviously, we're not getting a lot of hurrahs and stuff. I mean, the most excitement I got was soup to nuts. So just to, just to break, you know, the, 
<laughs> the level of your seriousness. But you know, what you were isn't what you are now. Is it? So what you were has already been washed in the blood. You know, that's why Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's the power of God unto salvation to those that believe. And he was one of those. He was a church hater. God picked the very one that at that particular time hated the things of God and this new sect of Christians more than anything to the point where he would turn them in, watch them as they were stoned. So just because we find out in the word of God what doesn't please God doesn't mean that he's picking on us. He's not picking on us. Huh? God's a big God. He's a big God. He doesn't do anything. He really didn't do anything for himself. He did everything for mankind. And now he presents us with an opportunity to come clean. And we can all do it. We can all do it if we want to if we want to. I think, I think living a wholesome life really frees you up. You'll, you'll solve a lot of mental issues. Because the first one that wins when they're right is the one that's right. You have no issues with mental health when you're right with God. When your heart is open, when you're not the least bit embarrassed in prayer to say, Father, I just want you to reveal to me by your spirit anything that I need to remove from my life, anything that is presently hindering me or is fixing to hinder me in my walk with you unforgiveness, hatred, bitterness, and the list goes on. All of those things are covered under the things that we just read. Mom, do you have something that you can look up the definitions for fornication? I want to be sure that we get past uh, soup and nuts here just on this. Just be sure we can see all of those things on there. Because, you know, I wouldn't want to, you know, I wouldn't want somebody to say, well, you know, this guy's a homophobe. Yeah, really, come on. I'm not, I'm not homophobic. I'm not, I don't think I've got any kind of phobic going for me right now. <laughs> Amen. I'm a word nerd. You know, and the word, unlike brill, came, brill cream, you can't get by with just a little dab. Mm -hmm. You need more than a little dab. Brill cream, you're just a little dab will do it. A little dab will do you. How's that coming out, babe? Well, there's a lot of verbiage. A lot of verbiage? I'm going to get right there. <laughs> yeah, adultery. Do you have all this down? Yeah, it's, it's the simple definition. That's all it says. Fornication according to Merriam-Webster 
Dictionary. Oh, well, there, that's weak. Miriam was, I think Miriam was gay. Yeah. <laughs> but that's also the definition in uh, Webster's. And yeah, everydictionary.com. Sexual intercourse between two unmarried persons or two persons not married to each other. I'm not really sure I see the difference between the two, but hey. <laughs> They're just trying to make it clear as possible because when, when you get involved in that kind of uh, uh, activity, it's kind of like you forget yeah. what's right and what's wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like your brain drops into your whatever. <laughs> huh? You guys are going to make me walk all over the place, you know? Get them steps in. Mom, did you, huh? I said get them steps in. Oh, oh yeah. That, well, one of, the, one of the definitions is porneo, which is obviously where we get uh, the word pornography. A ver? Immodest sexuality, homosexuality. That ain't fitting. Incest. <laughs> what? Incest is best. I, I used to hear that incest is best or roll your own. Bestiality. And that what they, that's what they used to say. Hey, I'm just telling you what they used to say. Don't look at me like I'm some sort of an animal. You know, you guys sit there with your holier than thou looks on your face, you know. That's how, that's how we defined incest. I'm glad you, you guys have come. A lot of people won't come because, you know, they're too pure. <laughs> they're just too pure. But I'd rather have people that can get to a point where they recognize this is not about me. This is about him. This is about him. How did that statement go? The one I just said? You, nobody wants to remember it or say it? Oh, yeah, incest is best. Or roll your own. That's sick, brother. But it's, it's not like it's not prevalent. It's not like it don't happen. It's not like we got to be ashamed of what's not right. Who in the world is going to tell people? Huh? They're going to tell them. They're going to tell them at first church. They're going to say nothing to them because they're white. <laughs> and they think just because they're white, they're right. But they done lost their sight. Really, it might be easier to make fun of these things because they're designed to destruct, to bring destruction into people's lives. But if you bring them down to where they belong, huh? if you bring those activities down to where they belong, then you realize possibly, how in the world could I have allowed myself to be involved in that? Well, don't think about that too long. Just thank God that he's forgiven you. Thank God that he can help you. Would you like to have one of your kids to tell you that? Mommy, I, I think I'm a little girl. I'm sure it goes on. Dad, I don't think I'm a boy, Dad. I really, I really feel like I'm a girl. It's probably happening every day. It's probably happening every day. Or someone would say, you know, I was, I was abused. I don't, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be around men. Well, just because you don't want to be around men doesn't mean you need to be around women. Yeah. 
perversion is perversion. So I'm pretty impressed with the rest of the list too because they're all together. They're all in there together. Hatred, backbiting, envy, strife, all of those things. They're all listed with the same stuff. Now, just because they're listed with the same stuff don't mean they're as drastic as some of those others. The thing about sexual sin is it is a direct sin against your body, your physical body. It jeopardizes your person, your being, mentally as well as physically. But again, as I said, what happened over the, over the decades was people got desensitized. And we knew a lot of people, maybe in our family, relatives or whatever, that, uh, that were involved in those kind of things. You know, I had an uncle. He's somewhere now. I... Well, I don't know where he is. I don't know where he is. And he had a, he had a little boy out of wedlock. Uh, when I was about, I think I was about seven. And the family that I was around, I didn't know anything about it until I was 18. I mean, they hid that boy. They hid it. You know, there was a day when people weren't excited about burying a child out of wedlock. Now, don't get all butt hurt. Please don't. Don't do that. That's so stupid. I hate when he talks about stuff like this. (laughs) I'm so bad. Are you in the family of God now? Well, yeah, I'm born again. Well, then you're forgiven. I didn't know you were going to be here tonight so I could put pressure on you. We want to put pressure on the enemy. And the only way we can have pressure on him is when you and I put pressure on him. Until we are willing to stand up and face these things. And let people, how about, how about that there are people that are caught in many of those things on the list who would love for somebody to tell them that God's not mad at them, yeah. yes. that God loves them, yes. that God will forgive them, yeah. and he'll help them yes. be delivered yes. from what it is that's trying to take their life. Yes. Not talk about it. And now many churches embrace it. Yeah. One of the mainline mon- denominations, I understand, they're, they're fixing to split and have a, a LGBTQ wing and, uh, and a regular uh, God's people wing. Wow. You know, most people hear about a place and... Uh, and they know that it's probably not a good place for them to go fishing. Right. Yeah. And this is one of those places. Yeah. Now, it's a great place to get forgiven. Right. And a great place that when you get forgiven, you can turn your life around yeah. and find how to fix your living. Yeah. But it's not going to be a place that is convenient for you to research the territory. And I feel reasonably sure that we'll become more more adamant about that. You know, we uh, we have protocol and standards for those that work here. And, uh, 
I'm sure glad we do. Because when something happens, we can just put them in the street. Say bye. Never come on this property again. You are not welcome here. You know, you transgress the opportunities that God has given you and have no remorse. The only thing you're upset about is getting caught. Then you're not ready for the family. And the family's not ready for you. Say, well, that doesn't, that doesn't sound like Christian love. Well, I'll tell you how God handled it in the Old Testament. They were stoned to death. Well, why would a loving God do that? To keep the cancer out of the camp. To keep the cancer out of the camp. The Bible says he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. But the Lord is our shepherd. And he wants us protected. Hmm? And the rest of the things all have horrible consequences if we begin to allow them to grow in our life. Backbiting, strife, talking bad behind one another's back. I don't care what level or position you have. All of that stuff is really a a bad deal. But the good thing is God's love, Jesus' blood, and the grace that they brought us is enough to be forgiven and to be changed forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you don't want to, I'd keep my action real quiet if I were you. I'd keep it real quiet around here. I got some big guys here (laughs) that may come visit you. Say, well, Pastor, I've just had an issue with this. Well, it's time you're delivered of that issue. If you're a child of God, it's time you take charge of that issue. And as the song says, you get yourself in position. Hmm? And then you begin to put the word of God on that condition. And pretty soon what you were will be a has-been. And you can become a what you should be. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's not too late, huh? I mean, this is not something you guys want to continue, I know, but. (laughs) Those of you that have kids, I would really take what's going on very seriously. I mean, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not promoting the EDU. It is a great, it's a great opportunity. But you need to be, be sure you understand the severity of what's going on. These, these people aren't playing. And much of it, much of it uh, has little to do with the teachers. Teachers are bailing out anyway. A lot of the teachers are bailing out. They don't want, they don't want anything to do with, with what's going on. But the bottom line is you need to keep your eyes and ears open. And you need to have conversations with your children. I mean, you don't have to be super pointed, but you can just ask them, you know, what's going on? What's your teacher talking about? Anybody coming to talk to you? Just ask them what's going on. Huh? You know, have a relationship with your children where they can feel good about telling you what's happening. You should want to know. You don't want Ruth coming home wanting to be Bob. I don't think we've got a Ruth or a Bob in the house, so I don't, well, if we do, I was just a, 
It was just, you know, happenstance that I got your name. But that's right. So what's happening? That's what's happening. That's sick. It's freaking perverted. It is ungodly. It is heinous. It is demonic. And they're aiming it at the children. And you better get your bottom ready if they go ahead and and throw over Roe and Wade. Huh? The fireworks are going to begin. There are people that are crazy enough. They'll take this too far. Now, I'm not going to. I'm not picking up arms. I ain't shooting. I ain't killing nobody. But the bottom line is we live in a country now that is so divided. And there is so much hatred and bitterness that if I were you, I wouldn't be surprised about anything. And I'm telling you, when they won't protect the Supreme Court justices, that's not a good place. Because just like they said, you know, if this had been Sotomayor, the judicial system would have been on them like white on rice. But as worthless as most Republicans are, and most Republicans that hold office, they still have a platform that gives more space for the things of God than the other party. I didn't say any of them were as pure as the undriven snow. I don't say that about any of us. But I know one thing for sure. We know right, and we're pressing forward. Because we're going to stand before him personally. We want to be wonderful corporately as a church and as families. But let's get this thing right down to the house. Because it's about each and every one of us. And he'll help each and every one of us. You know, I've been walking this walk for like uh, 43 years or a little over 43 years now. And I'm going to tell you, I haven't stopped seeing the adjustments and the things that I needed to do. Even if they're just thought life. Finding myself in the wrong place. Mentally. Not focusing and staying focused on the things of God. And it's just as important that you do that as that I do that. Every bit as important. Because you're every bit as valuable as anybody. And I pray you begin to see yourself that way. He hung on that cross one time for all of mankind. And that included every one of us. He is no respecter of persons. And I'm going to tell you, if there are issues in your life, even though they're small, it's his desire to help you remove them as far as the east is from the west. And he's never embarrassed to see you come. I don't care how many times you've come to him. He's never embarrassed. He's never embarrassed. He's always ready and willing to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God's not mad. God's not mad. Jesus made him happy. And he'll never be sad again. Amen. Amen.